Are you aware of a European nation teeming with life? Indeed, it's a bustling hub where more than 47 million individuals have established their abode. Quite remarkable, don't you think? You may guess Russia or France, but it's actually Spain that we're highlighting. Spain with a population exceeding 47 million and an economy surpassing $1.2 trillion. Spain ranks as the 14th largest economy globally, standing tall among the world's wealthiest and most advanced nations based on the sheer magnitude of its economic prowess. Remarkably, it's only marginally smaller than Russia, a country with three times the population and significantly more land. The largest component, including tourism, which is one of Spain's primary economic drivers, contributes significantly to the GDP and employment. Manufacturing and industry notable for automobile production, food and beverages, and pharmaceuticals. Spain is also a leader in renewable energy, particularly wind and solar power. Agriculture. Known for its olive oil, wine, and fruits, Spain's agriculture plays a crucial role, although it contributes a smaller percentage to the GDP compared to services and industry. Construction industry experienced a boom in the early 2000s, and despite the downturn after the financial crisis, it remains an important sector. Technology and innovation, growing steadily with investments in biotechnology, aerospace, and information technology. Spain has a robust export sector, with machinery, vehicles, and pharmaceuticals being some of the top exports. Spain has the second longest high-speed rail line of any country in the world, but lags behind China in terms of high-speed rail length per capita, which means that although Spain is about the size of California, it has as many high-speed rail lines as the entire United States, five times more, which is insane. So so it's very easy to quickly travel between all the major population centers in Spain, which are concentrated in Madrid in the center, and the Mediterranean and Atlantic coastlines in the south and north. But strangely enough for Europe, Spain is a large country, almost four times the size of the UK. But England has nine million more people than Spain, and England's population density is more than 4.5 times that of Spain. The whole of Europe is so connected by high-speed railways that almost everywhere there is empty land, forming a this weird empty donut. So we all know that there is a developed Spain with a large population and probably been to Barcelona, Madrid or Valencia, and an empty and underdeveloped Spain that most of us don't know about. The population and size of both sides. The difference between outside and inside the donut is huge. The difference in population and size between the two sides is really large and could be catastrophic for the country as a whole. 90% of Spain's population of more than 42 million live within 30% of the country's total area, concentrated in the big cities on the coast and in Madrid and Zaragoza in the center, which means only 10% of the Spanish population only about 4. 7 million people live on the remaining 70% of the country's total area, in and around this empty donut. The population density of this so-called empty Spain is 70% soil of. With an average of only 18 people per square kilometer, this is unmatched anywhere else in Western Europe, and roughly the same population density as Norway or the US state of Kansas. This area is not small, about the size of West Virginia or the Republic of Ireland in the United States, but these areas have a population of one. There are only four places in the whole area with more than 20,000 people, so the average population density of the whole area is only one per square meter eight people per kilometer, which is comparable to New Mexico in the United States. 
This makes Serrania Caltaburica the second most sparsely populated region in the entire EU, with fewer people per square kilometer than even Europe's Russian and Scottish highlands. The region is very remote compared to the rest of Western Europe, with three quarters of villages and towns taking more than 45 minutes to drive to the nearest city. Steep geography, high average elevation, and the resulting dispersion of population centers in the region's limited habitable valleys are several natural explanations for the relative underdevelopment of Serrania Celtibarica. Within a radius of 100 kilometers of the Iberian Mountains, you will find large population centers such as Madrid, Valencia, Zaragoza, and Bilbao, far from the only mountains limiting the expansion of domestic settlements, and the northwest the Cantabria Mountains in the north, the Pyrenees on the border with France, the central system directly through the middle, and the Bedic system across the southeast Spain is a mountainous country. So its average elevation is in the EU countries. It ranks second in the Middle East after Austria, which is covered by the Alps, but the mountains alone do not tell the whole story. Both Austria and Switzerland have an average mountain area far larger than Spain, but their population densities are much higher than Spain. Spain's rural areas have lost 28 people over the past 50 years, dating back to the rise of Francisco Franco in the 1930s. Between 1936 and 1939, the Spanish Civil War unfolded between left-wing Republicans and right-wing nationalists for three years, with violence killing around half a million people across the country. Franco triumphed and established fascism in Spain-style dictatorship, closely associated with his Civil War allies Nazi Germany and Fascism Italy. Although he maintained official neutrality in Spain during World War II, as a result his dictatorship survived the war and Spain continued as a right-wing dictatorship. The state functioned effectively until his death. Due to the Francoise era, Spain was for a long time a relatively isolated international pariah state, not joining the United Nations until 1955 and the European Economic Community, the predecessor of the European Union in 1986. Decades after its original creation, independent political parties and unions in the country were banned, and the state initially pursued Otage's economic policies aimed at complete self-reliance. Spain's economy has been stagnant for decades after the massive devastation caused by the Civil War, a situation that led to an influx of people who had clashed with the regime or experienced economic hardship. So Spain experienced a post-war period of several decades, net migration. But the real slump in the countryside began with Franco's building plan in 1959. These free market and industrial reforms completely transformed the formerly antiquated and stagnant Spanish economy almost overnight. Industrial zones in the region and the northern coast followed. The explosion of development jobs and opportunities in Barcelona and Madrid, attracting millions of young Spaniards from the countryside, gradually falling behind and neglected, puts the enormous pace of industrialization in the background just after the Second World War in 1946. In the end, there were only 72,000 private cars in the whole of Spain, and just 20 years later in 1966, with over a million cars in the country, Spain suddenly became the second fastest growing economy in the world. In the 1960s, Spain had the second fastest growing economy in the world after Japan. After Franco's death in 1975, absolutism ended and many immigrants returned to Spain, mostly settling in the newly industrialized areas near Madrid, regardless of where did they originally come from. In the past 30 years, Spain has experienced a massive overseas migration for the first time since the early 1990s, 
As of now, more than 15% of Spaniards were born abroad, and most of them were even born outside Europe, mainly from Spain's former colonies in Latin America, making Spain the fourth largest immigrant country in Europe and the tenth largest in the world migrate country. Throughout the 20th century, the total population of Spain roughly doubled from 1900 to 2000, and although rural populations have declined absolutely in 11 of Spain's 50 provinces, Spain's population has barely grown in recent times, and in the past in 10 years, from 2011 to 2021, the country's population grew by only zero. This is mainly due to Spain's very low fertility rate, which many demographers blame on Spain's severe lack of any serious family support policies. In of all Western European countries, Spain spends the least on family support. To put this into perspective, a Spanish family would need to have 57 children to receive the same financial support as a Luxembourg family with only three children. These are all factors that have contributed to the decades-long hollowing out of rural Spain, such as the province of Turuel, where a large number of rural areas are located. Most of them are within the aforementioned Serranian cult. Look at this graph. The population of Teruel was fairly stable over time until between 1960 and 1970, which is when Franco's industrialization program began. When it started, the population of Turville is now half what it was a century ago, because tens of thousands of people emigrated abroad in search of better opportunities. Today, the population of Tourville is half what it was a century ago, because tens of thousands of people emigrated in search of better opportunities, leaving behind their small villages. Living conditions there tend to be harsh cold in the high mountains in winter, only very basic facilities and infrastructure, and there is a lack of investment in infrastructure. 40% of the small population remaining in Turville continues to lack any form of internet broadband covers the province with only one super slow train going just 30 kilometers per hour, and even a tractor overtakes it in this video, which became a memory on Spanish social media. The lack of investment in infrastructure in these rural communities makes them less and less attractive to live, and as the attractiveness becomes less and less people live there, more and more people move away. Investments are becoming less and less attractive, which is a very vicious circle. Nothing seems to be done to reverse the overall trend in the last few decades, so this is where we are now. 90% of the Spanish population lives on only 30% of the land and the remaining 10% is fragmented, live on 70% of the land. Growing the area by increasing investment to make it a truly attractive place to live, again investing wisely, is the easiest key to building a secure future for everyone, from the size of the country and region to the individual. Fortunately, you can explore some of your own personal investment decisions through the public. As the nation strides forward, guided by the collective vision of a more equitable tomorrow, it is the recognition and celebration of its diverse mosaic of identities that will serve as the compass guiding its path towards a brighter, more inclusive future. As we conclude our journey through the complexities of Spain's demographic landscape, one thing becomes abundantly clear. The path forward is as challenging as it is promising. From the bustling streets of its urban centers to the quiet corners of its rural heartlands, Spain's story is one of resilience, diversity, and untapped potential. Join us next time as we continue our exploration of the human experience, one story at a time. Until then, may the journey ahead be filled with hope, understanding, and the unwavering determination to build a future where every voice is heard and every dream is within reach. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening voyage.